Hey guys, welcome back for another Quest for the Sixes 55 build. So during this video, we're going to be showing all of the welding of the chassis, getting the rear end and the rear suspension in. But first, I wanted to do a quick update to let you know what's been happening as far as race week and everything else goes. I know that some of you will probably have already seen videos and pictures and know that the car has actually already started and ran and actually even been on race week. However, um, there's a lot of story behind it and a lot leading up to getting it there. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue to share everything in the order from the build to the end. So don't think that we're months out from seeing it running. We're actually like two weeks out um, before I share with you guys that. But I wanted to go ahead and keep it in order. I think it'll be better for the build. Um, if I was doing this for strictly for YouTube content and not for a race car as being a priority, I would have done this totally different. I would have, <laughs> we would have totally drunk the build out um, and made it where we could share this timely. But the fact of the matter is that we really did get into a crunch time, like an insane crunch time where we were not sleeping at all. I know some of you have been worried about that. He is alive, he's over there <laughs> sitting on the couch, napping, recouping from race week. He's about to hop in as well. but. Um, anyways, yeah, so we got in a crunch time and that put these in a weird, weird upload order um, and, and didn't allow that to happen in the time that I would have actually liked it to. Anyways, on to this video. Like I said, chassis, welding, on the ground, suspension, rear suspension, all of that. You'll actually see it rolling on the ground. So we'll have dad hop in now, do a quick check in, and then we'll get on to the video. So, catching him strolling by he said do i have to be seen we are actually at the house uh, mom is catching up on laundry i've been catching up on editing and he said i just want to go to bed so he is uh he's getting caught up over there wave show that you're alive i think everybody thinks i i killed you the last couple weeks i don't know if you killed me but something killed me <laughs> lack of sleep Lack of sleep, lack of sleep and overworked. He'll be back at it, um, good to go. He's alive. So, on to this video, voiceover to come. Okay, so here it looks like you are getting ready to take the body off of the chassis. We were actually just talking. All of this seems like it was like months and months and months ago, but this is when I was gone to Motor Trend, so this was sometime during April, May-ish. So it's not been, actually it's May. It's May. It was it like six months ago, maybe? <laughs> it feels like I it. I mean, seriously, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, I don't even remember this because it's so long ago. We're obviously taking the engine out, getting it, I guess at this point we're getting ready to take the body off. Yeah, so this is when the body was getting ready to come <clears throat> off. You had days of welding ahead. <laughs> yeah, you were getting ready to go to, to your filming. I was already there, um, oh. I believe. I had been there for a couple days, so getting the wheelie bars off and all of that. At this point, I guess everything was squared up, ready to go, body coming off. You know, at this point, it hurts to tear a car down. It's really not together, You, but you've worked so hard to put it together. Yeah, we're on the lift now. So it was really close to looking like a car, and then we have to tear it apart to start welding and finishing the stuff. It kind of hurts your feelings to take it apart. You literally so close. go backwards to go forward. Like the rear end looks like it's there where it should be, which by the end of the video, it'll be actually in the chassis. But at right there, it looks like, oh, it shouldn't come out, but it does. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to take it apart because everything's lined up. and But that's what I was doing. I was unscrewing the temporary screws out of the plates that hold the look, chassis to the body. Look at that skeleton, though. Yeah, that was the first time we'd seen it. Did you get a total on how many bars or feet that was? I'm mm, sure you don't remember no, right now. I've never looked, never thought about it really, honestly. It's like a crazy little skeleton. It looks like a dune buggy at this point. <laughs> so we're getting it positioned over that beam so we can lift it up. That's kind of a scary thing because many years ago I lifted a chassis and it was the one for that blue willy sitting back in the corner and the chain was not hooked together properly and it fell and your mom was under it and it drugged down her leg and really hurt her leg. Pretty crazy. 
Here, Megan makes an appearance. Let's see. Okay, rear end out. So, getting it set up. <laughs> this was, I think you scaled it there. That's what you were doing, checking. No, no. thanks. Yeah, that's so. how you pop the scale under the front. Have a scale mm -hmm. I don't even remember doing so that. at this point you didn't put it in a chassis jig there was a lot of welding what was your method for not forgetting a weld did you work front to back left to right side to side what nope. was the thought nope 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 <laughs> i just worked just wherever i felt like welding i'd try to bounce around so i didn't put too much heat in one area and there's only like ten thousand welds so you literally have to look at the car and you know roll it over i flipped it several times and incidentally through all of that i don't know if you'll see it in this video or not but i'm contorted twisted inside out upside down welding with my knee my elbow my chin i mean anything that i could push the pedal with i missed one half inch of one weld way up inside that area that where all the x bars are and i swear every guy that's seen the car <laughs> It worked on the car. Hey, you missed part of a weld here. <laughs> no kidding. Guess what? I never did fix it. It's still missed. It's nothing. It's got a floor over it now, carbon fiber, so it doesn't matter. But honestly, there's there's so many welds in that thing that it was ridiculous to think that I wouldn't miss something. It's also ridiculous to think that you welded that in three days because it, every point that you see there where a bar intersects, it has to be welded all the way around, like a complete weld, and it's you, all TIG welding. You can't really do it in one shot. You don't weld all the way around one bar in one shot. So you weld what you can, and you flip it over. You weld what you can, and you know you, it may take three or four times to weld that one bar. How many bottles of argon did you go through? Two. Two, two oh, complete bottles. Here, on. also, you're adding bars. So right there, it was a real quick clip. You went back and added a couple bars that may be out of order, but um, where you added them for I the want front. The, They're not actually in there yet. There's, you'll no, see right there, the, must have been out of there order. was some kind of bar. I don't know what that was, but there's double frame rails at the front that I added after I took it apart. I just guess I got ahead of myself. I didn't want to do it while it was together. The motor was in it. I wanted to wait until I got it out of the body and stripped down before I actually put those bars in. It's no big deal. It just flips and flips and flips. Yeah, I flipped and flipped it by hand. And <laughs> in there, well, you guys were gone. Your mom was gone somewhere. And I, I think was, she was still gone. She, that's when, I think you started on this when we were driving out to Arizona. I think so. I was by myself and in my zone and just welded. I mean, it just, I, I can't tell you how much. How many times I had to sharpen my tungsten and get up and down and in and out and I don't even see it doesn't even look painful here but it really is. <laughs> That's why I left all of the welding from beginning to end but in very fast speed because I found it really entertaining to see all of the different positions that the chassis was put in and the oh, different yeah, positions. Oh yeah, it's entertaining, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it looked like a monkey crawling around in a zoo. <laughs> no, that, that, that's not bad. See all those back up in there, all that little, where my hands are at right there. I literally had to stick my face in there. And the helmet's bigger than the hole, so I'd literally hang the helmet over one hole with my head in there, put it on, and try to work on those welds. And that's where I missed a half inch of one weld, which you'd think was detrimental yeah, yeah. I mean, if you were going to actually do this on like a regular time schedule where it wasn't just insane uh rush how long do you think this would take like if you were to take somebody was to take a car to a shop and have um a, a chassis built what do you actually think weld time would be i don't know i mean you you wouldn't work like i worked on this i just i never even slowed down it was straight through so i think i had close to three days in that I'm sure it'd be you know close to a week of welding. That's the one thing. There you There's go. There's the extra there bars. Is. That yep. one that you see with I'm matching this one up to, that goes back to the mid plate and just added a an extra bar, which really gets in the way. You know, it's this motor's in the way. It's gotten away of the spark plugs, but it adds so much strength. Just decided after looking at it that it needed another bar. I actually had it in my mind the whole time, but I just wasn't sure I wanted to do it, so I. <laughs> made up my mind at some point here to just do it and get it done. <laughs> he down. actually did say that to add that one bar was just a lot mentally because it's like all the stuff had been done. It's like having to do it again, even though it's just 
a couple more bars. I really didn't want to notch any more tube and I could throw <laughs> up. You know, I'm just over it. But it needed it. I knew it needed it. And it's one of those things that if you ever do a big wheel stand or something, it's, it comes down. The front was needed. It was all based, you know, the motor plate makes it what it is. I oh, yes, you're this. done welding. So right here. This is the first time there was no three quarter inch drive sockets in the shop. This is not a three quarter inch drive. This is a half inch torque wrench from gear wrench, but um, setting up the rear end and somewhere around this point, I got back and realized none of the tools in the shop were big enough. <laughs> for This pinion, I don't know if it shows, see right there, that pinion nut on that thing. It was already set up as a brand new rear end that Jake Shoemate gave us. To put in the thing and it was brand new from strange and that pinion when we went to pop the pinion off just the yoke is like holy crap we tried every half inch breaker bar and impact gun and everything we had and it wouldn't even think about budging i predict that it took 350 pounds maybe 400 to pop that nut loose i don't know what they tightened it with but it was super insane human. um setting up gears here we went with the i'm trying to remember right now 370 389. 389, yeah. Rear gear. That's been a popular question. I know that seems like a question that you should just know, but from car to car to car to car to car, <laughs> there's a lot of different. Yeah, with the height <laughs> of the tires, it actually gears out about the same as the Nova. The difference between the 340 gears and the Nova and the 389s and this, but it's a tire height difference. So looking back, it's funny to think that this was actually the point where assembly started happening because we had gone from, you especially had gone from so much fabricating to actually start assembling while there was still a lot of fabricating ahead. It's weird that this is the point because I didn't realize it at the time that that was kind of like the turning point where stuff started going together, like a final assembly. I'm looking at it and I can't even remember. I mean, you look at that and seriously, the... We realized that the pinion shims weren't the same as what we had in stock because it's a strange ultra case. And I was like, oh no, what are we gonna do? We don't have time. We we're literally at this time on a crunch. I mean, we we started overnighting parts and we I don't know how many overnights we did. I don't wanna add it up. It was a bunch. <laughs> that rear end turned out really nice though. That was, that yeah, was it's nice. Yeah, that's done. The, I'm putting the floater hubs on for the first time here. Look at the bolts in that ring gear. They were already in there, so I put them all back in. You typically don't put 20 bolts in it, but we did because they were there. I mean, it doesn't <laughs> hurt anything for sure. <laughs> Might as well add them. So this is a full floater rear end. This is the first time that we've had that. It's a no-brainer. Look at the size of that tire. You get tire shake on that tire. You know, you're you're flying and you're getting tire shake. What have you? Oh, I got sounds. What am I grinding? Oh, I know what I'm grinding on. There's powder <laughs> coating the studs and with no actual wheel lug holes and it was keeping them from fitting on the big studs on that floater hub so i was sanding that out of there but without the floater if you shake and you break an axle out there you know it, your tire comes off it's it's a bad deal it's just so much stronger So after that, we've got, I'm trying to figure out where we're, we're skipping to right here. Oh, you're still still sanding. These wheels, though, I have to highlight. I love these wheels. Love the color. I think everybody loves these wheels. All it was is literally they powder coated them, and there was just a little too much powder coat in those holes, so I just sanded them out, and they slid right That's on. That's how precise it is, though. It's it, <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's like thousands of an inch. It's perfect. <laughs> oh, man. I wish those tires still look like that. I know. Like I said, you guys are seeing this little out of, well, I mean, the car has already been down the track at this point. I can't wait to share you with that uh, soon. But those tires work so good. So happy with those, how they perform so far. So this is pretty exciting. Again, I'm by myself. Everybody's gone. But You're going to have to put a disclaimer here. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing stuff. So was I. <laughs> it's important. But struggling. <laughs> Nobody there to help. Just me, lying in this big heavy chassis up with a strap and a hoist. Look at that wiggle. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> but it's, it's, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> Dramatic. All you people are wanting to kill me because you think I'm trying to kill Dad, but I really was gone working. I was doing stuff that was important. So it's coming down, we get the four link in it. It was fun because this is the first time we actually seen it on the ground. It looks like a dune buggy. 
dune buggy with slicks. It's pretty cool. You know, there's a lot of cars out there that actually look like that. We I, we suggested at this point we should just stop. Like we should just leave it. It looks good. We should mount the turbos yeah, up do. on a roof like everybody does and be in the cool kids club and just go down the road. We could be like six, seven hundred pounds lighter if we did that. So what are you assembling here? Four link. It looks like. Hey, I'm, look! I got back. Oh yeah, you're back. An appearance. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Your mom's not there, but you are. Hey, there's an important time. So we get ready to, this is when you're actually putting it together, together. I don't even know. I think I'm putting the four links on no, so we are. could get it rolling. Yeah, we were putting four link bars in. Hey, hey. look who's there. Deb. Deb That's makes an too. appearance. Hey. I think you guys were goofing off in Tucson still or something. <laughs> no, this is after I painted it. I mean, this is after we had a chest. I did that for there too. Yeah. So we didn't even talk about that. You were just sleeping. We didn't even talk about that. The paint. You got it all painted. Yeah, I don't even see it happen. It just all of a sudden. I wish it was really like that. Well, it did happen pretty quick. It happened in like a day. So got once it got all welded, got it all welded, Dad painted it. We picked out a color. Well, we didn't pick out a color. We mixed up a color. Um one morning and then he got it all painted it's kind of it's what is it black blue and silver is what it ended up being mixed yep. yeah the blue adds if you just mix black and silver together it comes out kind of smoky gray it's not really a pretty color it literally looks like smoke so you put a little blue in it and it turns it into more of a charcoal kind of gray it's actually a really pretty color sadly it's been sanded on a lot at this point <laughs> oh it's, it really makes me sick what's happened in the last the last week of it where we had to sand on it to weld so much stuff. I'm, I'm going to take it all back apart. Not but, all apart. But, but there wasn't really an option because there was a lot of people that asked, why did you go ahead and weld it prior to having it all assembled? But, or having all the brackets and everything added. But with, especially with the time crunch, that just was not an option. You have to put the whole car together. Can you imagine putting it all together and taking it all back apart and putting it all together yeah. again. I mean, it's it's a beater. It's not and supposed to be a super nice car. It's not a SEMA quality car, if that's what we, you want to call it. We actually did discuss, too, just leaving it in primer. Because you had it in primer, was going to leave it. But as he said, it was like it would never get painted had we put it back together with primer. So it was better to sand a couple spots and, you know, a couple spots not be painted or brush painted. Because painting it in the car, <laughs> there's so many bars. It was hard enough to paint outside the car. It's ridiculous to think about painting it, putting it all together, and then taking it apart, painting it. It's just not going to happen. Ooh, look. It rolls on its own two rear wheels. How exciting. So, going back to four link. But anyways, so got it painted. Um, also, in addition to that, you felt like the, the dash had to be built and everything like that, firewall, all that, with it actually in the car. Yeah, I mean, the, the the stuff like that. I mean, you weld the dash to the, to the, to the cage, to the structure. I mean, it's got to be welded in the car. So, all that had to be done in the car. You couldn't take the chassis out after you do all that. So, you'd be painting the chassis in the car. I could promise you that as hard as that chassis is to paint out of the car you'd never want to do it in the car it'd never come out nice you'd have so much bare metal where you couldn't get around the back side of it to spray so it literally has to be done out of the car i guess we're putting a four link together here I skipped Are for you, you just shutting me off i i, I, I skipped a little for you so here we're going to front suspension this is also exciting andy alberto Shout out for getting these struts. What a dude. I mean, what would we do without them? Because we literally still wouldn't have the struts that we ordered. This is in a bad bad timeline bind. Andy <laughs> so. pitched in and sent us his struts that he had taken off. And incidentally, Andy, I think you made a mistake. <laughs> There's no reason to not use these struts. I was literally concerned that these struts only have an inch of down travel and a couple inches of up travel. And that was going to be an issue. We never, I'll go ahead and spoiler alert, we never bought them this car. We never drug anything in our 700 and no. whatever mile journey. It was insane. It, it, this car rides better than any car we have. I literally commented multiple times that it rode smoother <clears throat> than my 2011 Camaro because there's a couple potholes that are close to around like our area. And when I hit them with my car that's lowered, it just sounds awful. It's so rough. Uh, this car was just like 
just floats over them. It just, just it glides. literally doesn't, it doesn't bang, it doesn't rattle, it just goes over them and you go, oh my goodness, what happened? It's, they yeah. fixed the rotor we or what? We were impressed the whole time. So those are strange struts. Um, they're on the car now at this point with dad's adjustable cups up front, which was nice. Which but look was at that. necessary. Oh, did you see it roll? Yeah, it rolled. I think I'm out of order. Here we we I built this with it to be sitting like an inch and a half lower than it does. And we wanted that originally. You know, that was our goal, but that was gonna require bubbling those quarter panels. So in the haste to get this thing together, I cranked those cups down an inch and a half is what I did. And it's perfect, you know, it's, it actually sets good. We'll probably never actually lower it at this point. So had yeah. I just welded the struts in, I'd have been, you know, we'd have been in trouble. Okay, wheelie bars. Look at these sissy sticks going together. <laughs> There's some big, long sissy sticks. They're 84 Crutches. inches, I believe, from, uh, it's a kit from Tim McAmos that dad welded. I believe that was another video where you guys saw all that, so... It's a lot of welding, whole lot of welding. But. There is, there's a lot of work. Everything about it's a lot of work. It's just, don't go into one of these things thinking you're going to do it overnight because I don't know, I don't know how people do it. I don't know how I did it. It's a lot of work. <laughs> you can't tell by his voice. I think he's pretty tired of it right now. But we do have a really cool car. Let's, it's let's an awesome to go. car. I love the car. Yeah, so it's cool though to look back because like literally this seems like it's been months and months and months ago, but it's only a month ago that this was happening right here. So um, you guys really aren't that far behind. And like I, I mentioned earlier, we probably, if this was car was built for YouTube, I can guarantee we would have done it differently and drug out the timeline, but race day deadline is what, what put us in this crunch. So wheelie bars going on. This is also exciting. I, I seriously didn't realize at this point that we were so close to what was about to happen. So close. We were so far away. So close. We so did, far away. We did from this point here to to actually hitting the road was more work than to get it to this point. See, Dad the last was. Time. We still had enough time right here though, or felt like we had enough time. Dad was paranoid. Like any time there was a fingerprint on it, it was like take this microfiber and clean it. Little did he know. <laughs> now it looks like hammered doo doo. <laughs> So this is also exciting. Body going on it. Started off the video with the body coming off. Now ending it with the body going on. How yeah, exciting! That's cool. I wish I had another one. <laughs> Ready I don't to want go. To build it, but I wish I had another. I wish hey, we were at that point with the second car. That is gonna happen pretty soon. When uh, with the, well, not pretty soon, but it'll happen with Bailey's car. You guys will see some more videos of this with Tom Bailey's Nomad. It's kind of yeah, the same. Just about the same point on it. I got to start welding it pretty soon. Still waiting on parts. Then there'll be another 55 Nomad in the shop. Jared Scott's, you're going to get it's threes of charm, too, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> so if you guys like 55 content, well, I think we like tuned. 55s. I hate these things. <laughs> yeah, right. Anyways, yeah, so that that's coming up soon. But lots of this. I that's love like, seeing that. When I saw it sat on, sat on the body for the first time, like or a chassis on, body on chassis like that, like, on the ground that was a really cool moment it's exciting but it sat lower there it sat where we wanted it to sit but we realized that we don't have the time to bubble quarter panels and stuff so we raised it up i'm kind of happy with it though because i like the no bubble it's still low enough where it looks really good yeah. but and it, it kept us from having to have that bubble quarter because that's something we discussed and debated back and forth was how to do that honestly the if we had lowered it to where it was supposed to be i'd have been building a different oil pan that would have taken time it, we didn't drag this car once i mean and that's really amazing because all those miles and up there and you know farm country and mountains and we never all the times we pulled off the road and turned around and and went back for more filming we were filming this whole thing and so we turned around a butt we never scraped anything well, this is out of order and I don't know what's going on here, but we're still talking. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up with a random video. That's uh, just really bad editing. It is all really is. awful editing and I could redo it, but realistically. Look at Mika's looking at it going, what are you idiots doing? <laughs> realistically. Look at that pile of parts back there. I'm so glad that's Oh, not. oh, okay. This is when we're actually kind of driving it around. I don't know what's going on. Consider this a cap off, an ending to this. Just random footage stuck together. You know what? I'm going to blame Megan on this one. She edited this. Well, Megan wasn't there. She didn't know what came That's first. True. But like, on the other hand, it doesn't take much to realize that we already did this. Anyways, Oops, there That's we it. are. Black screen. Goodbye. Okay, bye. It's back to bed for me. <laughs>
And that is it for this video. There is a lot more to go to catch up. So it's kind of common down here so I can get caught up with you guys. Thank you so much for your patience as all of this has happened. If you want some spoiler alerts, go to my Instagram, Alex Taylor Racing, or Dad's Instagram, Dennis Taylor 522 and you can see some spoilers. Or if you want to wait it out, I'll be getting it out to you soon. Anyways, that's it for now. As always, be happy, go fast, and stay pretty. I will see you guys next time.